Well, this board combination is a non-volatile RAM programmer that I'm going to use to do the initial programming of the RAM for the first version of my Z80 board. So it's an 18 mega 2560, but I added a Z80 emulator into it because there was plenty of code space and data space so that it emulates a Z80 and it'll execute programs right out of the non-volatile RAM. Sure, it runs equivalent of half a megahertz clock, but that's fast enough to test user interactive things like stuff that I need to implement before I put things onto the Z80 board. Like what's remaining is a disassembler and a single stepper. I learned something in porting the emulator to the board. It's called Z80MU and you can find it on GitHub. And what it is is a pile of C code that does emulation and you incorporate that into whatever application you want. And so I incorporated it into my non-volatile RAM programmer. But what happened was it was able to run all my assembly code that I wrote so my Z80 monitor ran well, including the Kermit file transfers, which is pretty complicated because there's timing there. I had to slow the baud rate down, but that was the only consideration. But when I compiled some C code, I'm using Z88DK development environment, and you can compile assembler code, you compile C code, and produce binary files that they call .rom files that are just basic raw binary that you can load into memory and jump to. In a simple C test, which is basically hello world and do some reading of characters from standard in, the program would print the hello fine and it would print characters fine. But if I had anything with a percent %d format to print an int, with printf, it would basically go off into la la land and trash memory. I eventually figured out that I didn't consider the size of ints. The emulator was expecting ints to be at least 32 bits. And on an embedded machine, it turns out for 8-bit AVRs, the compiler has 16-bit ints. So after fixing that, it runs even C code fine. But I learned something important, and that is if your user code goes off and trashes memory and you're using static RAM for your entire system, user code can trash your system code. And normally system code is in a ROM or an EE prom, so it's protected from that kind of stuff. But because I don't know what my final memory map is, and I'm just kind of learning that as I go, how I'm going to do it, I am running everything in RAM and using battery backed up RAM. That's fine. So when I build the first Z80 board, I'll be able to turn the power off and back on and still have my so-called ROM monitor. But if user code trashes the monitor, then I have to go all the way back to this 2560 board and reprogram the non-volatile RAM. So that's a little inconvenient. But I'm willing to live with the inconvenience because I really don't know how big my system code is going to be. And I don't want to just set aside like 16K for or 8K for the system code when it's not necessary. So once I get all my system code written and everything debugged in the first version of the board, I'll think about doing something better in hardware. If I decide to stick with non-volatile RAM, I'll add memory write protect the system area of memory. If I decide to use an EEPROM, at least I'll know what size EEPROM to put in so I'm not wasting space and taking it away from the user code space. So that's an update.